Hello everybody, welcome to your latest weather update, and today we're going to be discussing the active weather we have going on in the tropics right now. We do not have much severe weather occurring at the moment, um, nor any risk for tornadoes at all, so overall on land, there is not much transpiring right now, however we do have some active tropical storms are, that are developing as we speak in the Atlantic. Um, so first I'd like to briefly summarize this year's Atlantic hurricane season and what we're likely to see unfold. Um, so to be frank with you guys, we're likely to see an above average hurricane season um, in this Atlantic uh, hurricane season this year, according to the latest forecasts from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric uh, Administration. The NOAA predicts 13 to 20 named storms in the 2021 um, season. Of those, they're, fact, they're forecasting 6 to 10 to become major hurricanes, ranked as Category 3, 4, or 5, with top winds of at least 111 miles per hour. There's a 60% chance of an above normal Atlantic hurricane season, according to this data, but it's not expected to be as busy as last year's, which set the all-time record with 30 named storms. Now, historically speaking, we do not have a whole lot of activity during the month of June in the tropics. However, this does not mean you should let your guard down, because as summer in the northern hemisphere approaches, we are watching every segment of rainy weather between the Gulf of Mexico and Africa, um, Western Africa, I should say, as each as each counterclockwise swirl of wind or burst of puffy clouds means it has the potential of becoming a tropical storm or even a hurricane in some cases. Um, but that's more likely in the months of August to October. Statistically speaking, about half of the tropical storms that are formed over the past two decades grew into hurricanes. So we're not so we're now quite accustomed to seeing about 16 tropical storms per year. Um, some of you also may be asking where the tropical storms begin. Uh, well, to simply answer that question the best I can, the hurricanes themselves actually inhabit in the atmosphere, but they acquire their energy from the ocean, as well as other factors. I'll get to those in just a second. Uh, commonly used analogy to describe growing hurricanes is almost like growing crops. If you think about it, hurricanes will be more catastrophic and robust due to the favorable environment conditions or weather disturbances, or like a plant, seeds. The seeds of tropical storms are small and hardly menacing weather disturbances known as remnant lows, but you'll find them scattered throughout the tropics on any given day during hurricane season. Um, let's just stop right there. You may, some of you may even be asking, why did this happen? Why are there so many different low pressure systems forming out in the ocean during Atlantic, Atlantic hurricane season? Um, well, in the Atlantic, some, or what I'd say most, have a, cl as a cluster of thunderstorms over Africa or as clouds near the Cape Verde um, Islands off of Africa's w um, western coast. However, the vast majority um, all these low pressure systems do not last for very long nor intensify anywhere relatively close to a hurricane strength. The ingredient that really makes the, the very few so strong and destructive is the easterly airflow that sweeps them up um, and plants them over tropical Atlantic Ocean uh, between about 10 to 20 degrees um, north latitude. Now this is where the next ingredient comes into play here, which is warm waters. This practically is a giant battery to power these developing systems, but again the other ingredients um, also have to be present as well. But this is where growth is really fueled. Um, from from there, developing tropical storms are carried westward and north and northward by the steering currents of the atmosphere. All the while avoiding uh, the equator, where the crucial effect of Earth's rotation is too small for them to develop further. Um, the more these variables we actually have into play here, the better chance of an, an active hurricane season um, we have, which is what we're facing this year. Um, now, several factors have an effect on the power of tropical storms during any given season. Um, but one thing we also really have to take into consideration here is the Saharan air layer. That's something we really focus on during hurricane season, um, especially during the active ones. Uh, so once these smaller tropical systems emerge from the African coastline or from pockets of warm rising air uh, popping popping up elsewhere uh, over the ocean, uh, as where our attention really shifts to is this um, region here called the Saharan air layer which is essentially uh, the environmental conditions that can fuel or limit the growth in tropical storms and hurricanes. So pay attention to that, guys. It could fuel or limit the growth. Um, the bottom line is hurricanes don't like dry air in the middle parts of the atmosphere, and that's exactly what the Saharan air layer offers. Um, a Saharan dust storm, on the other hand, also occurs in this region, which actually has a very strong surge of air embedded in it, called the mid-level easterly jet. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. Its importance is basically that it can utterly rip a storm apart as trying to develop, um, so I'll get to this later, um, very high wind shear is something you don't want, especially in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Um, we also call that vertical wind shear. Um, and then the third piece is all just dust from there. The reasoning behind this is that dust prevents convection. The process of moisture, which is basically the process of moisture being risen into the higher levels of the atmosphere and then precipitating as rain. So these Saharan dust layers seem to have a blanketing influence on the development of convection, which is another key role in fueling a tropical system. The next ingredient I'd like to discuss is the warm waters 
that fuels hurricanes. Um, well, in general, tropical storms thrive with the surface ocean. It's a good 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26.7 degrees Celsius or warmer. Um, that's why temperatures are rare before June 1st and more likely to occur, occur August through October. The main fuel supply for tropical storms is the heat energy in the upper ocean, um, the top 100 feet or 30 meters or so. Now the effect of these upper level winds that I mentioned as well, um, is another variable here that I mentioned. Um, it actually plays a key role in this process of a developing tropical system. These prevailing winds already um, blowing in a region can also make, a, make or break a storm. What I mean by that is, how much faster the prevailing winds are near the top of the storm and at the bottom is called wind shear with too much wind shear the storm has has difficulty maintaining um those towering plumes of rising high air similarly if the rising air can't escape the flow outward quickly enough the energy consumed by the storm can't be ventilated and the engine kind of chokes and um that kind of breaks apart the actual tropical system both can actually prevent the storm from becoming organized and either cap its growth or cause it to dissipate in a way. Uh, I actually went over this in a couple videos back, uh, I think actually twice now, but I'll just go over it one last time in case any of you are still confused. Um, another important clue here about the future uh, wind shear in the Atlantic region comes from the events thousands of miles away in the Pacific Ocean. So when the, when the Eastern Pacific um, Ocean is abnormally warm, which is, that, which is actually known as an El Nino season, the global atmosphere gets rearranged in a way that increases wind shear over the Atlantic. That tends to suppress tropical storms here, because as I mentioned earlier, um, this higher wind shear causes the storms to dissipate and completely break them apart. Um, like I said, it's also very frequent um, and present in the Saharan air layer. Um, it tends to be other slow variations in the climate system also um, influence environmental conditions, including multi-year periods of warmer or cooler air um, then normal surface temperatures in the northern Atlantic. Um, El Nino's counterpart, the La Nina, tends to bring low um, wind shear, which is actually what we're looking for in tropical storms that actually favors them more. Um, these conditions are near neutral right now, actually, this upcoming season. Um, we were in a La Nina season just a few months back, but that has actually been at a steady, steady decline. We're seeing, we're seeing a lot more neutral conditions as far as the um, as far as, clim as far as climatology, but we also have to factor in other environmental. Um, ingredients here that goes into the making of a um, hurricane which are all very present which is actually the reason why we're looking at such an active year ahead of us but um in terms of climatology um influences we're looking at more of a neutral season rather than a la nina or an el nino uh, i feel like if we're still in la nina season we may have an even worse hurricane season um ahead of us possibly even worse than last year's although it really is unknown at the moment so like I said, conditions are neutral right now, and forecasters are watching to see what develops here in the very near future. So to end off this tangent I'm going on right now, if you're watching for early signs of Atlantic hurricane seasons, of Atlantic hurricanes in 2021, keep an eye on the uh, African monsoon season or storm seeding as well, as temperatures in the tropical Atlantic Ocean provide the fuel and a possible late blooming La Nina, uh, meaning less wind shear to tear these storms apart. Um, the National Hurricane Center actually, um, as well as many other forecasting groups in, in the government, um, analyze these and other factors in their season projection season projections um, so not only do we have these ingredients being very high and very active this year we're also looking at a strong Bermuda high over the Atlantic this is essentially a high pressure system um, that is very high reach um, very strong it's actually located over the Atlantic Ocean and has the ability to influence the movement of tropical systems in the Atlantic Basin that's how strong this high pressure system is um, so you have this large divergence of air um, above the Atlantic Ocean, and it's almost steering a lot of these storms clockwise. Now, due to it being extra strong this year, it will have more of an influence on the projected placement of these tropical storms and hurricanes. Uh, mainly, mainly hurricanes, though. Uh, this mean this means that more of these stronger hurricanes can end up in the Gulf of Mexico. You know, so it really just pushes them further with an even stronger Bermuda high. Um, other than again, um, we can surely have a lot of these hurricanes still track. Um, more northwestwards and head up the southeastern coast um so a lot of so impacts could certainly be there too uh this means that a lot of these stronger storms can end up in the gulf of mexico similar to last year's hurricane season um anyway now i'll finally give you guys an update on the developing systems we have right now i just wanted to give you guys a lesson on hurricanes so you can have a better understanding of what i'm about to go over so when i say we have an alinea in effect which we really don't but you know what i mean um or lower wind shear you would actually know what i'm saying um so let's move on to this tropical update that we have right now. So what we're looking at right now are the remnants of um, what was Tropical Storm Bill, 
one of our very first tropical storms of the season so we already have a name off the list here overall bill was mainly um i'd say kind of a bust um we actually had a westerly flow um aloft that pushed its way offshore but it caused down um what we call a downslope trajectory trajectory due to the appalachian mountains on um, the trough we also have in place right now was the main source that it was um was the main source of channeling convection into this developing system um this may have been what caused some of those outer bands to reach um, and move across the inland portions of North, uh, coastal North Carolina. Now, dynamics are also um, relatively nim minimal for support of an aloft low. Um, not only this, but a cold front dropped uh, southeast um, across the forecasted area uh, back when I was in, coast in the coastal Carolinas. This was another focus area of convection, so it really gained a lot of strength and rapidly intensified here to make it a tropical storm. Um, again, we also had a weak sea breeze, uh, which also means low wind shear. Um, pieces of energy and convection that are hidden within the tropical flow aloft with actually what prompted this um, this remnant low to be a tropical storm, uh, a form of a tropical storm, I should say. As you can see here uh, on satellite imagery we have, it's continuing to move offshore and northeast with its only threats towards the mid-Atlantic and the northeast um, coast, possibly receiving rain and stronger rip currents. Um, but I'm actually going to move on to the next system that we're watching very closely here. Now this next system also has a very um, good chance of developing here. Which is currently a disorganized area of showers and thunderstorms, which are actually southern Mexico, um, where we have this broad area of low pressure. As we move through today here, we can see that it's not really expected to progress very far, as well as very little to no development um, due to it actually interacting with some land here in uh, Mexico. But don't, but don't let your guard down yet, because actually, if we fast forward through the model here, especially towards later this week, you can see it really picks up the pace on Thursday, moving northward. We're also seeing, um, we're also even seeing this chance for a tropical depression to form by late Thursday. Um, we can also see that this will be around the same time we may actually see landfall around Louisiana and Texas border. Um, as you can see here on the uh, NAM model here, around 12 kilometers near the surface. Uh, that's your reflectivity radar. You can see it's really well developed here. Um, this may actually become a tropical depression. It wouldn't really surprise me actually. So this is also known as Invest 92L, which makes Friday's forecast for the region very dependent on the possible development in the Gulf. Um, again, we can also see here on the radar, there's a very good chance for some kind of development by late Thursday into Friday as the system moves into the Western Gulf. So we can also see here global models are actually continuing to track, um, track it toward and then eventually into the coast um, on this uh, Sabine Pass uh, area or on early Saturday, actually. Um, once again, it cannot be stressed enough that without a center, the models um, are actually going to struggle with the ultimate track um, and intensity here. But... Um, but if no, I've actually a couple of trends on um, the models I've been keeping. Um, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right now. So of these different models, this is actually the GFS here. Um, we're noting a couple of trends that the models have been keeping, which is um, first we have Frog Cheer. That should actually keep the system fairly um, more lopsided looking. And the other is that the bulk of the moisture and rains will likely have a greater impact on Louisiana initially. So for Friday, we should be looking at um, greater precipitation water values um, along the coast and in the Gulf waters, uh, so we'll also, have, we'll also have drier air and training around the system that should help keep the heat index values for most of the locations. But uh, heading into Friday, um, Friday night into Saturday, the higher um, precipitation water values will continue to be over the eastern and southeastern portions of the um, forecasted area here. But um, as you know, the, the Texas and Louisiana border, um, as the Texas Louisiana border um, and coastline is really in this thing's wake, uh, this along with other possible, along with another possible surge to deep tropical precipitation water values should help keep scattered rain um, chances in southeastern Texas for Sunday and Monday. So to sum it up, the chances of development continue to slowly tick up with, with this Invest 92L that we're facing later this week. So at the 2 a.m. Um, tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, um, development potential is actually up to medium in the next 48 hours and high at a high 90% in the next five days. Uh, model guidance also continues to be pretty bullish. Um, on eventually getting a tropical cyclone out of this mess. Uh, like I said, right now it's very disorganized, but in the next coming days, we should really see some more development and we'll really pick up the pace here towards the Louisiana, Texas border. But then again, this is still a fair amount of spread and what happens from there. Um, models are on it, too much of an agreement right now, actually. As you can see here, it's actually a GFS model. Um, we can fast forward here and, and we can actually see when it actually impacts on um, the Gulf Coast here. Now keep this in mind, it's actually a GFS model. We always see the center beginning to move in here throughout um, south central Louisiana. A lot of that heavier rain affecting the Alabama and Mississippi border. But now we actually look at the more detailed um, CMC model. We actually zoom in here. See, this, see it's still quite accurate. Um, still similar to the last one, although that center is actually moving a little more northeast than expected. 
um, that initial rainfall really won't be affecting Louisiana as much according to this model. So it hasn't come to too much of an agreement. Like I said, it is still kind of far out. Um, of course, this is not really a surprise though. Without a defined low pressure center to work off of, the models are having um, a hard time to correctly forecast both um, of what everything will um, consolidate around. Um, and then we will, and then what it will do from there. So given what we are looking at for development out of a, um, broad gyre, uh, that is difficult. Regardless of what happens though, this feature will be very important. Um, for the forecast from Friday into the weekend, um, please check back. I'll try to inform you guys on periodically here. Um, especially on my Instagram posts where I post more frequently than here on YouTube for the latest information here. Um, according to the National Hur Hurricane Center as well, the situation kind of evolves here. So uh, there you have it, guys. I managed to actually fit this hurricane season's forecast, the reason why such strong hurricanes actually occur, and, and the current developing system that may actually make impact on um, American soil here in one video. So this may actually take me a while to edit, so I don't expect the last bit of this video to be completely accurate. Um, some of the forecasts may have actually changed, especially according to the National Hurricane Center. Um, the website may have something different than what I'm telling you right now and what I'm, I'm viewing. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed these updates um, on these unfolding weather events. Uh, so anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.